In this section, we're going to walk through the setup of ESLint inside of the Atom code editor. So if you're not using Atom, you'll want to skip on to the next video that covers your very particular code editor. The setup for ESLint is different for each editor, and that's why we've got a series of different videos to explore how to set up ESLint with different editor. So with Atom, let's get started. I've opened up my Atom editor inside of a project directory here. And in our case, it is our React Native project. But it doesn't matter what type of project we're using ESLint for with. It can be React Native, React JS, Ember, Angular, whatever it wants to be. Doesn't matter. So inside this project directory, I'm going to open up a single file called index.ios.js. Now the only reason I'm opening up this file is so that we can test out our linter and make sure it's working after we install it. So let's get started with the installation. Up at the very top left hand side, I'm going to click on Atom and then open up my editor preferences. Then on the left hand nav bar inside the preferences pane, I will click on the install section. And then inside of install, we're going to search for a very particular package called linter eslint. The first result that I see here is the linter eslint package, and I will install it on the right hand side. And I'm also going to find the next package right beneath it that's called linter. If you don't see the next one on here as being linter, if it's anything else, then you can just do another search for the linter package itself and find it and install it. So we're also going to install linter as well. Okay, so installing these is gonna take just a moment of time. So while that's occurring, we're going to flip over to our terminal and do another little bit of setup. I'm also gonna pull up our diagram on how ESLint works right here. So at this point in time, we just started the installation of the linter attached to Atom and ESLint, the plugin that's going to run inside of the Atom editor as well. So now we need to install our configuration, some pre-built set of rules for our linter installation to run. So we're not going to write a rule set from scratch, we're just going to use one that has already been put together for us. So to install a already pre-generated or pre-built list of ESLint rules, in my project directory, I will install an npm module. So we'll install with npm install dash dash save dash dev. We're going to install this as a developer dependency. And then we're going to install eslint dash config dash rally coding, like so. All right, so let's install this and just let it do its thing. And while that's going, I'll also check out my Atom preferences and just verify, okay, yep, both of them appear to have been installed successfully. So I don't need any more settings anymore, so I'll close the settings pane at the top. And I'm going to go back over to my terminal and just verify that this installation is going to wrap up here in just a second. Okay, well, that's just going to take forever. So while that's going, the last step for setup that we have to do is we have to make sure that ESLint knows to use that rule setup or that rule bundle that we just installed via NPM. To tell ESLint that we want it to use that bundle of rules, we're going to add a configuration file to our project. So inside of my project directory, I'm going to create a new file called .eslintrc. So dot, make sure you get that dot on the front, eslintrc. So any setup that we want to do for ESLint for this particular project, we add to this file right here. Remember, this is going into the realm of project-specific settings. So on every project that I start off where I want to use ESLint, I will need to add an ESLint RC file. Again, this is project-specific setup. So inside of here, we'll do a little bit of project-specific setup. First, I'll add on a set of uh, curly braces to specify an object. And then we're going to put in inside of, very specifically, double quotes, the word extends with the key of rally coding, like so. Make sure that you've got double quotes on both extends and rally coding. So what this tells ESLint is to go and find a install dependency inside the node modules directory, which is what we just installed, called rally coding. So we just installed, and it looks like it just wrapped up successfully. We just installed 
an ESLint config called specifically rally coding. So we're just telling ESLint, hey, go use that configuration that we just downloaded. All right, so now the last step, I'm gonna close out the ESLint file. I'm gonna close out the index.ios.js file and then reopen it. And then once I reopen it, my ESLint, uh, my linter should be active. So if I start deleting some code, you'll see that I start getting some error messages popping up on the screen. Specifically, in this case, you know, I just deleted the semicolon, so it says, hey, you're missing a semicolon, you can't do that. But then we can also start doing weird stuff like, I don't know, how about plus, 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 plus. And yep, that looks good. It says parsing error, unexpected token, because we did a bunch of pluses in a, in a row here. Okay, so that's it with ESLint inside of Atom. That's all the setup we have to do. The one thing to keep in mind is that on any future project where you want to use ESLint, you have to create the ESLint RC file, paste in this configuration, and then you also need to install the ESLint config rally coding package as well. Remember this package right here just contains a list of different rules to tell ESLint how it should validate our code. Okay, so that's our setup. Let's get continued in the next section.